Blog Talk Radio. Well, good morning. It's Blog Talk Radio, interpreters of the oracles of God. Hope everybody's doing awesome today. I'm calling this one today filled with precious and pleasant riches. And of course, that's from the book of Proverbs, which I'll talk about in a little while. And I always and always want to remember to say thank you to IHOP Kansas for letting me use their music and always blessing them. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And I declare in the name of Jesus that you will have above and beyond what you could ever ask or even think or even imagine to fulfill your part of his story. And I ask this in Jesus' name. I just want to say I'm so thankful to God for IHOP, International House of Prayer, It is a beautiful ministry, and I pray that if you've never taken time to go and listen to their 24-7 worship and prayer and intercession and teaching, Mike Bickle and all the uh, staff there, they're just amazing servants of God, and I'm just so thankful to know about their ministry. So thank you so much, IHOP. I also want to, of course, declare Numbers 1019. I mean, ten nine. Sorry about that. When you go to war in your land against the adversary who attacks you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets, that you may be remembered before the Lord your God and be saved from every single one of your enemies. And I'm in a um, recording of the shofar. I'm going to play it. Here we go. <laughs> And so my prayer today is uh, some scriptures that I made into prayers. And so uh, the first part of the prayer is from Ephesians 2, 21 and 22, and I use the Amplified. Oh, Jesus, I just thank you and praise you, Father, in Jesus' name and by your power, Holy Spirit. I pray that in you, Lord, we are complete, that in you we have complete knowledge and illumination and that each of us are growing into a holy temple, a sanctuary, dedicated, consecrated, and sacred to your presence. In you and fellowship, and with fellowship with one another, we are being built up to form a fixed abode, a dwelling place of God in the spirit. And that alone is unbelievable. God is so awesome. Colossians 2, 3. In you, Lord, are all the treasures of divine wisdom, comprehensive insight into your ways and purposes, and all the riches of spiritual knowledge and enlightenment are stored up and lie hidden. And, of course, that's for us who are in him. Colossians 2.10. We are in you, Lord, made full and having come to fullness of life because of you and being in you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are filled with the Godhead. The Father, you, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And reach full spiritual stature. You, Lord Jesus, are the head of all rule and authority of every angelic principality and power. And what does that mean for us? That means if we're in him, we have that same authority also. That is so powerful, isn't it? Thank you, Lord. We're going to go into John fourteen twenty four. Lord, thank you. We do love you. We do love you. And we we want to keep your word. And we want to keep the will of the Father. And we want to love him. And Lord, you said that you said that if anyone loves you, that we, we will keep your word and that the Father will love us. And and that he that you you will come to us. You will come to us and make your abode with us. That means that you're home. You also say, Lord, 
that he who, who does not love you won't keep your words. And the words, and you said the word which you hear, you said it's the Father's word who sent you. And so you said, Lord, that that you would disclose yourself to us and make your home with us. And I just thank you for doing that. And I just thank you for the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father sent in your name, that he teaches us all things and brings brings to us remembrance of all that you have said, and that is John fourteen twenty six. And I just thank you and praise you for your word. And we talked last week about what it means to be in him and how he longs to fill us up with these amazing things. And, of course, we have a choice and a part in it, too. We can either choose to be filled or not to be filled. And I want to go in Ephesians 5.18. It says, do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. So isn't that something? It just shows here what worship is. is worship is such a beautiful part of being filled with the Spirit because it says be filled with the Spirit as you do this, as you sing psalms, of course, because it's the Word. And hymns, which always have the word in it. And spiritual songs, which I believe is the prophetic gift of the psalmist, which is also the word, singing the word, singing the rhema word. So look at what happened. We're going to look at what happened when the glory of God filled the physical temple as they were in unison worshiping the Lord because worship will bring the Lord. It says he inhabits the praises of his people. So I want you to notice what happened. They came from the holy place. And we can go into the holy place by the blood of Jesus today. And so it says this in 2 Chronicles 5. We're going to start at verse 11. And think about this also. Are we not kings and priests? (laughs) So it says, when the priests came forth from the holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without regard to vision to divisions, and all the Levitical singers, Asaph, Heman, Jejuthun, and their sons and kinsmen, clothed in fine linen with cymbals, harps, and lyres, east of the altar, and with them 120 priests blowing trumpets. And isn't that interesting? There were 120 trumpeteers. Does that number sound familiar to you? Because there was 120 in unison on the day of Pentecost. And I was just like, Lord, you're so amazing. So in un- in unison, with the trump- when the trumpeteers and singers were to make themselves heard with one voice to praise and glorify God. And when they lifted up their voice, accompanied by trumpets and cymbals and instrument of- instruments of music. And when they praised the Lord saying, he indeed is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. Well, the cloud, of course, is the Shekinah glory of God. And they were all in unison, praising the Lord, worshiping him. And he came and filled the place with his glory because worship of God, true worship of the Lord, come and inhabit the praises of his people. So that the, then it says, then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house. Now in Solomon, now we're going to go in 2 Chronicles 7, 1, because the same thing happened again here. Now when, well, this is pretty much talking about the same event in uh, Chronicles. Now when Solomon had finished praying, Fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. The priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. And if you've ever experienced the glory of the Lord, think about this. 
he is coming from the realm of glory to touch human human beings. And when he touches us, we it we we are in the intoxicating presence of God. And sometimes we cannot stand. And it's because divinity is touching us. It's so powerful. So amazing. Think about this. Think about David. David knew. David experienced the glory of God. <clears throat> he says in Psalm 71, 3, and verse 8 also, he says, Be to me a rock of habitation to which I may continually come. You have given commandment to save me. You are my rock and my fortress. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. So being filled with the Holy Spirit, worship, worship will bring God and he will come and inhabit. It's like, I love how God hears when we cry out to him. If you've never read Psalm 107, it's just an incredible psalm. But I'm just going to read um, verse 9. How he satisfies the thirsty and hungry soul and fills us with what is good. God is a good God. He fills us with good things. And throughout this psalm, you know, it talks about how when they cried out to, out to, out to him, he came and he rescued them from, from pretty dark places. And so I want to talk to you and tell you about this word good in that verse, which says how he satisfies the thirsty and hungry soul and fills us with what is good. And that word good means, well, I'm going to read it to you. It's beautiful. It's in the Hebrew, 02896. It means pleasant, agreeable, agreeable to the senses, pleasant to the higher nature, excellent of its kind, rich, valuable in estimation, appropriate, becoming, happy, prosperous, of man's sensuous nature, of man's intellectual nature, kind, benign, ethical, well, welfare, benefit, a good thing, prosperity, happiness, welfare, benefit, good things, happiness, bounty. That's our God. He's a good, good God. He's a good father. And I want to go into where I... Uh, where I got the uh, title from was Proverbs 24.4. And by knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. And, and that word knowledge in there is uh, the Hebrew 01847. And it means perception, skill, discernment, understanding, wisdom, and the rooms in the house. It isn't just physical rooms. It's the rooms of our innermost being, our our spirit man. I can safely say that. This word rooms in 02315 means chamber, room, parlor, innermost or inward part within. The innermost or inward part. Isn't that beautiful? God wants to fill our inward being with perception and skill, discernment, understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. And the word precious in this this proverb means valuable, prized, weighty, precious, rare, splendid, costly, highly valued, precious stones or jewels, glorious, splendid, weighty, influential. The word pleasant means delightful, sweet, lovely, agreeable, beautiful, physical, this is, I love this, physical, singing, sweetly sounding music, musical. Isn't that beautiful? And the riches in this is wealth, riches, substance, high value, sufficiency, wealth. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And so we know then that wisdom and understanding are more precious than jewels, more profitable than silver. So we know the riches, and I believe the riches, I believe some of the riches are also uh, money, monetary, if we are in God's system that he set up. But 
Isn't it beautiful how God wants to fill us with with all treasures and all riches and the riches above monetary riches and jewels are wisdom and understanding and all the all the things that all the beautiful things in the, in that verse. So how we're going to talk about some of those so that we know that those riches are riches of understanding and wisdom and other beautiful things. So I'm going to read about that. In Proverbs 3.13, it says, How blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding, for her profit is better than the profit of silver and her gain better than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire compares with her. Listen to what it, it encompasses everything, because if you have that, if you're filled with all these beautiful things of God, it says in verse 16, 316 of Proverbs, long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree to life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who hold her fast. And it says, my son, you can add daughter because it means mankind. If you will receive my words and treasure my commandments within you, this is Proverbs 2.1, make your ear attentive to wisdom, incline your heart to understanding. If you cry for discernment and lift your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice, and he preserves the way of his godly ones. Then you will discern righteousness and justice and equity in every good course for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul discretion will guard you and understanding will watch over you so these are the beautiful treasures he wants to fill us with and if you go into proverbs 8 it says we're going to start at verse 10 take my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choices gold For wisdom is better than jewels, and all desirable things cannot compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and I find find knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way, and the perverted mouth I hate. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding. Power is mine. By me, kings reign, and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, all who judge rightly. I love those who love me, and those who diligently seek me will find me. And, of course, we know we're talking about Jesus because in him is everything. Riches and honor are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, even pure gold, and my yield better than choices silver. Now, here is obviously talking about Jesus. He walks, it says, I walk in the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of justice to endow those who love me with wealth. Now, here we go again, that I may fill their treasuries. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way before his works of old from everlasting. I was established from the beginning, from the earliest times of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While he had not yet made the earth and the fields, nor the first dust of the world, when he established the the heavens, I was there. When he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep, when when he made firm the skies above, when the springs of the deep became fixed, when he set for the sea its boundary, so that the water would not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundation of the earth, then I was beside him as a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing in the world, his earth, and having my delight in the sons of men. 
So therefore, O oh sons, listen to me. For blessed are they who keep my ways. Heed instruction and be wise, and do not neglect it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates. For he who finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me injures himself, and all those who hate me love death. Because we know Jesus is life. And so we're going to stop a minute and we're going to play a little bit of the song. We can't play the whole thing. It is so gorgeous. It is called Hidden in Christ, Hidden with Christ. You can have it all with Davy Flowers and Rebecca Koenig. It is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous song. So here we go from IHOP, Hidden with Christ. You can have it all.
Isn't that beautiful? I'm just going to let it play a little bit in the background. Hopefully it won't be too loud, otherwise I'll just turn it down. We hit him with Christ, and this is what this this whole series is all about, being hidden in him and all the incredible things that he's done for us. We are so indebted to him. He's so amazing, and I know we all love him. And think about Isaiah 33, 6. And he will be the stability of your times, a wealth of salvation, wisdom and knowledge, the fear of the Lord is his treasures. Hidden in him. Think of all the beautiful things he poured into people. And I'm just going to give an example in Daniel of Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach Abednego, and Daniel. In Daniel 1 4. Youth in whom was no defect and who were good looking, showing intelligence in every branch of wisdom, endowed with understanding and discerning knowledge, and who had ability for serving in the king's court. And he ordered him to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. And then in verse 17 it says, As for these four youths, God gave them knowledge and intelligence in every branch of literature and wisdom. Daniel even understood all kinds of dreams and visions. And I just thank you, Lord, for doing that to your children and your children's children and your children's children's children. In verse 21, in Daniel 2.21, listen to what Daniel says about him. It's he who changes the time and the epochs. He removes kings and establishes kings. He gives wisdom to wise men and knowledge to men of understanding. Everything comes from him. <coughs> Let's go into the New Testament. In Romans 11.33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and judgments and unfathomable his ways. In 1 Corinthians 12.28, it says, For to one is given... Remember that we're given these things. The word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. He wants to fill us with all these beautiful treasures. Ephesians 1, 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give. He gives it to us. A spirit of wisdom and of knowledge. Of revelation in the knowledge of him. And if you've never really mused on Ephesians 1, 17-23, and you read that every day, it will start to happen in your life. For this reason, I'm going into Colossians 1, 9, for this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And in Colossians 2, 3, in whom? There it is again. It's in him. It's all in him. And we're in him if we choose to be. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And if you're saying to yourself, I don't even know what that means. How do I become in him? If you're a believer and you don't know that, begin to pray Ephesians 1, 17 through 23. And if you're not a believer... Sorry about that. Ask the Lord Jesus to forgive your sins and come into your heart and make a commitment to him. That prayer is just an introduction because you have to repent and turn from your ways and make a commitment to him and begin to learn about him through the scriptures and find like a really pray about a church to go to. And so how we stay, How do we stay filled and receive everything God has for us? We have to abide. And if we abide, we'll be friends of God. And the things Jesus hears from the Father, okay, I'm hearing, 
something I shouldn't be hearing. So I'm going to put on a song and figure this out. We're going to finish that song. I will be right back. I'll be right back. I'm going to figure out where this is coming from. I'm going to try to continue, and if that still persists, I'm going to turn off one of my computers. So how do we abide? How do we abide? A clue to that is John 15. We're going to start at verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, so that it might bear more fruit. You are already clean. Because of the word which I have spoken to you, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch. And dries up, and they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Now listen to what he's saying. He's telling you what it takes to be a disciple. He says, prove to me that you're my disciples. Did you ever really read that in John fifteen eight? It says, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. And think about in the Word of God, it says, You'll know them by their fruits. And so John fifteen nine says, Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. Now he's giving you some keys here. If you keep my commandments, Yes, it says that in the New Testament, in John 15, 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Did you hear that one? John fifteen fourteen. You're my friends if you do what I command you. He said before, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. So if you say, oh, I love Jesus, I love him. Well, are you keeping his commandments? Are you doing what he commands? He says this. You are my friends. If you do what I command, no longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I've heard from my father, I have made known to you. Well, I guess obedience is involved here, isn't it? It's just not saying, oh, I love Jesus. He's just so great. No, he expects you to obey him. He expects you to read his word. I'm going to go down into uh, John 14, 15. Listen to what he says again in John 14, 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, 
because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides in you. He abides with you and will be in you. Now here he goes again. He who loves me, this is John fourteen twenty two. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and will disclose myself to him. Wow, that's so personal. He's going to disclose himself to those who love him and keep his commandments. Lord, what then has happened that you are going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he'll, he will keep my word. Okay, here's another thing. We can't just say we love him. He says, if you love me, you'll keep my word. And my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our abode with him. And that word means home. It's so beautiful. He who does not love me doesn't keep my word. It's that simple. If you say you love him, you have to keep his word and you have to be in, you have to read his word to know his word. You have to read his word to know what his commandments are. So if you don't love him, you're not going to keep his word. And the word which you hear is not, he says it's not his, but the father's who sent him. These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you, but the, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. And I just want to read some of the in him scriptures, and there's so many of them. If you find out who you are in him, you will be revolutionized. I just want to go in 2 Corinthians one twenty. For as many as are the promises of God, they all find their yes answer in him, in Christ. For this reason, we also utter the amen, the so be it. And this is, of course, the amplified version. To God through him, in his person, and by his agency, to the glory of God. And let's go in Ephesians 1, seven. In him, we have redemption, deliverance, and salvation. Through his blood, the remission, forgiveness of our offenses, shortcomings and trespasses in accordance with the in accordance with the riches and the generosity of his gracious favor in Ephesians 111 it says in him we also were made God's heritage portion and we obtained an inheritance for we had been and this means mankind was foreordained and chosen and appointed beforehand in accordance with his purpose who works out everything in agreement with the counsel and design of his own will. You know, hell was never made for mankind. It was made for the devil and his angels. But those who choose to reject him, those are the ones of their own choosing. They choose not to know him. And so, let's go into... Colossians 1.16, for it was in him that all things were created, in heaven and on earth, things seen and unseen, whether thrones, dominions, rulers, or authorities, all things were created and exist through him, by his service, intervention, and in and for him. And verse 17 says, and he himself existed before all things. And in him all things consist, cohere, and are held together. In Colossians 2, 3, In him all the treasures of divine wisdom, comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God, and all the riches of spiritual knowledge and enlightenment are stored up and lie hidden. It's all in him. He did this all for us. It, it's it's incredible. It's phenomenal. I can't even think of a word. It's in, indescribable. His love and everything he did for us so that we could be in him, that we could be with him. He did it so that we could be in eternity with him, so that 
even while we're here, we can be filled with all who he is. It's the most incredible thing ever. Well, let's go into... One Corinthians one four. I thank my God at all times for you because of the grace, the favor, and spiritual blessing of God, which which was bestowed on you in Christ Jesus. And that word grace also means His holy influence, and how a person lives because of the holy influence that God gives to their soul. Let's do one more. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 2.14. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumph, as trophies of Christ's victory, and through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. I just want to leave with that because it's just so beautiful. Find out. Go online. And look up all the in him scriptures, the in Christ, in whom, in him. You will be so blessed and filled up with who he is if you keep putting that in your heart. And so I'm going to play the song, Fill Me Up, by Corey Asbury. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this blessed you. God bless you. Hope to see you next week. Here we go. It's called Fill Me Up with Corey Asbury. <laughs> 